But today promises to be a very, very eclectic day. We got to go shovel snow to start the day. Got to try to shovel my painting table. My painting table is uh, not, not exactly ready for some painting. But because of leapfrogging and sequencing, we've got plenty of other projects to work on today. If it does snow some more, we don't know. You never know. That's the problem. But I do know one thing for sure. At the end of every winter, we have another motorcycle in our collection. Ready, restored, ready for that big summer that's coming. And today's a good day. You just look around and you know summer's coming. Every one of these restorations was done basically with snow on the ground and a freezing cold garage. And you can just bring back a lot of memories on a morning like this. It's cold. It snowed yesterday. Everything's a mess. But it's not going to stop us a bit. So, of course, oh, there's our painting table in the back with a mirror. Yeah, it looks like it's sewed about three inches. Nothing. We got a shovel. And whatever's left of the day, after we're done with that, we'll drink coffee. And I think maybe I'll work on those stencils today. See if I can get one of those 650 stencils. Where, look at it. It's a beautiful. The skies are beautiful. That's the only problem is 28 degrees. And they're predicting more snow. My sacred painting table full of icicles and snow. I think we'll work on our stenciling today. Somewhere where it's nice and warm. It is really cold out here, way below freezing. Even my poor birds, we put up suet for the birds. And there's still snow and icicles on their feeder. Of course, Karen will not acknowledge it, but as we make coffee, there's a beautiful what kind of cake do you call this? It's a Bailey's Irish a cream. A Bailey's Irish cream cake. Mmm. I love the holidays. Now the badging on this and the word Kawasaki that's on the tank, I wanted to have, right from the very get-go, I want to have in exact matching gold. And the only way I know to do that, I'm not going to be able to do that with a, a computer or a sign shop or anything. We're going to make a paint mask so we can paint that 650R and we took the exact lettering off of the tailpiece and John interpolated it to a program and now we have I have it in paper ordinary paper from a copying machine and I also have it on a material that would make a paint mask so now the trick is to try to experiment a little bit and see if this is going to work do a little test on a piece of glass and if it works we're all set to go now it's really critical that part of my my vision for this whole thing is that this exact color gold these these badges cannot be close but no cigar they have to be exactly this color and that is we use this shelf paper that just gave us a little indication of what we were doing we did some tests on glass but I want the final part I want the absolute final badging and that word Kawasaki to be an exact match to the wheels and to all the trim on the motorcycle. And hopefully, hopefully, all this work will not be in vain. Now I haven't done this in many years because we used to do this in modeling and I've been out of modeling for roughly 10 years now. And we used to make all these masks and paint masks and stuff and it was relatively simple. But this is a new material. Now, this is, this is just Kawasaki. Here's that piece of paper. I keep that just for a joke. Anyway, here's the, the exact paper that we're going to use. And I'm going to try to, if I'm really accurate and careful, to cut exactly on these lines and make a paint mask and then do a little test on glass. Now, it may warm up later and I can get some paint on these parts, but right now... It's, it's still way below freezing out there. So we're going to post. This is the whole idea of leapfrogging. I have something to work on that I don't care about the weather. And in the meantime, of course, everything is drying up by the heating vent. A couple extra days of drying. Never hurt anybody. So some of the things we're going to be using. This is cold, and you can buy all this stuff in Michaels or any hobby shop or even better, Brodex. XL. Hobby blades, well, we don't have XL hobby blades, but this is a, called a cutting pad. And what it does, it allows you to cut on things like you would use a cutting board to cut meat. You cut this pad, 
and it's self-healing. It heals itself back up. Now, these blades have been useful, but the number 11s, and these are normally known as, I don't know, I got to take some out of here, Exacto number 11s. And this is something that usually works pretty well on cutting out, at least it did back in the day when we did this in model planes pretty much uh, on a regular basis. Number 11 blades. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but we're going to give it all a try. That's the whole purpose of today. And so we can stay inside and drink coffee. So step one is I'm carefully cutting. There's a defective one. See this part, the print didn't work out. I don't remember what happened. John told me, oh, I don't really need to make this accurate. This is just an experiment. So all I really need, and I, I want to use this extra part of material just for experimenting if I, if I have some kind of an issue I can't deal with. So we're not going to be able to use the bottom of this accurately, and I don't really care, because what we're looking to do is cut out these letters, and the way this is supposed to work, you're supposed to be able to cut the letters out, at least this is the experiment that we're trying, and then put this stuff called press and seal on top of it to hold everything in position while you take and stick this down. But now I'm going to do another thing. I'm going to build a frame around this just so it's easier to cut, the frame with mask and tape. Now, since this is just our experimental piece, I, I'm not going to spend my whole day on this, but I did want to get some some basic information and report to John. Now, John, of course, John Poth here is a, a very good modeler. I would say world class because he has combines a lot of skills, including these computing skills that I don't have. So I thought that would be a to start with now I don't remember from you know from so many years ago we used to do this with a material called frisket I don't even know if they make that material anymore every time you'd find something in modeling that worked well the next thing you went to buy some and they discontinue it that was just the way the way it was now, I don't know if this is necessary I again I I plan on doing a few experiments here before I do anything but by having that held in place over a cutting pad I also have and in my mind I'm picturing how I how I remember doing this I, my mind is like a like a sieve so let me start with the, the most basic thing to cut out and let's just see see because this is going to be it's a vision thing to cut on these little these, these real sharp lines and see how accurate I can make this if accurate at all and when he made these templates he can make them with various thicknesses of line we're gonna find out very soon now, of course you have to save this piece I do remember they made little tiny blades that were made just for doing this but of course Michaels doesn't have them. They had number 11s. So that's a piece I need. I got to save that. That's Now I can see right already this is I don't have to do that. I'm going to have to be a little more accurate than this. And of course if you can use a ruler that helps. And the idea is I want to eventually be able to cut out that word Kawasaki because I do want it to be an exact match. So this is just going to be and see already this is going to be time consuming but again everything worthwhile is time consuming and we have one other trick that because we're doing black we can take an india ink pen and anything that's not exactly right around the edge will have that possibility to to correct it but anyway let me let me just go back and do at least do the one of the letters see if i can get one letter cut and see if this is going to be an acceptable way of doing it so the first thing that's very obvious to me is you have to make this, if you're going to do this, with this material, this is the first time I've used the material, so I'm learning on the job and trying to pass that information on, of course. This material, and I don't know the name of it, John will have to tell me, give me all the information on it. This is very delicate material. But here's what you can't do conveniently. You can't cut halfway through and then go back and cut again. You don't get a nice line. And as an example, up here on a 6, I missed the radius, and I want to trim just a, the thickness of a pen line away. And it's very difficult to do that. It's not impossible, but, well, you have to be a brain surgeon to do it. 
Aren't you glad I'm not your brain surgeon? You're in the operating room and Dr. Windy comes in. Okay, that looks good. And it sees on these little tiny radiuses. See, this would have been better if I designed the logo, which I didn't. I think I can work around this, but I would have designed something with all straight lines. <laughs> Made it easier. You could use a ruler. See, a lot of times, if there's a lot of straight lines, you can use a ruler, a ruler, a ruler. Yeah, you can do that here, but it's just, it's, it's not hardly, it's not really worth it. So, here was the first part of the test. We got that out, which we can use this even just for more things to test. But see, if you don't get a clean cut on the first shot, what I'm trying to say, it's hard to go back and just trim those little hairs off. And not impossible. I, see, I haven't done this in so long, and that's that's the thing with any any skill like this. Once I start doing this, and that's why I did these first, not the word Kawasaki. This is a very very easy thing to figure out now we we used to just good information in the old days this is what people would normally use as shelf paper now the problem was with shelf paper if you and i'm i'm not convinced i can't do this yet if i somehow attach these and i can use this the shelf paper then because i know the company that made this john said went out of business and he wound up getting a couple sheets from various places, but you couldn't just get a bottomless pit of it. And I think the name was Papilio, but I'm not sure. But anyway, that's that's the beginning of our test. Now what I'm gonna do, obviously, just go right down, get this whole thing off, and then the thing is to put the press and seal right on top of it. The press and seal keeps it from doing this and that, and I've never done that before, but that's why we're doing a test. And just as a point of reference, I thought I'd show this. This is lettering that I did. And of course, I've done this probably a hundred times over uh, 50 years of modeling. You see how each one of these is outlined with an ink line? And the majority of it, and not the majority, every single line, is a straight line. You can do it a rule or so. If I remember right, this lettering was done with shelf paper. In fact, if I look at it close, I can see, again, notice the trick. Everything is straight lines. So, even a part on the fuselage, and this is all, all done by hand with stencils. So, we have, we know, I, well, maybe I should say I used to have this skill, but I, it, it's a little awkward coming back to this after 10 years. And this is the same lettering, the same thing. But again, if you're designing something from scratch, and you can make it all straight lines, you make your job a little bit easier. Not a little, you make it a lot easier anyway. Just thought I'd show that as a point of uh, something to think about if you're designing up some custom lettering. <laughs> and doing those outlines in white, the way you do them is you, you back mask the whole word and paint everything white and then put that white stripe around everything and paint the black. And it's all on video, it's on the Aeroplane channel. Anybody wants to see that in, uh, in real time. And many different, many different times. And a lot of the stuff that's done by hand, I can tell you one thing for sure. Doing this, making the roundels on the Spitfire, all of the roundels, that, talk about a labor of love. And what happens when you make a roundel, if that is a 64th of an inch off in any dimension, it looks terrible. Your eye picks it up right away. So anyway, these are the skills we got to work on next couple days and see if we can come up with doing a decent paint mask here but we have we have done our own style and this is all done with masking tape and with shelf paper so it'll be interesting to see how this test plays out just thought you'd enjoy seeing that just a picture i have here of a miss ashley one of the two miss ashley models look at the lettering exactly the same 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 thing now one of the things i've already figured out is I'm going to look on the internet and see if they have these. They make these blades with little tiny points. And, and I think I think what they're made for is when you turn, you see, when you do a curve, you can turn the knife. You see what I'm saying? And by the way, I, it, it, I cleaned all the glue off it. I said it had 50 years of glue on it. You think I would break down and buy a new knife. But see, so the trick is when you're doing a curve, as you come around, you've got to do this with your finger. You turn it with your finger. Now, that's a skill you pick up real quick. Uh, you should anyway and this is why I'm doing practicing but I think that little swivel blade will just make it a little bit easier and I know that I know they have such a thing that'll be one of my projects 
to try to figure that out and see if I can find something a, a little bit more high-tech than this when it comes to doing that word Kawasaki for the gas tank. So again, this is just going to be redundant. We're going to be in a little bit of a learning on the job training here to see how And next step is to cut the rest of these letters out, of course. So after this, I'm convinced this definitely will be doable. Now I'm not sure because the next phase of this is the press and seal. I want to figure out exactly how I want to do this. And I want to put it on glass and I want to be able to airbrush that in. But I, want to, I really need to make a plan exactly how I want to do this. Now I'm trying to think of what would be, see because I haven't done this yet, I'm just working off instructions. We need to save those pieces. Now the idea is when you take this off and go to put it on something, it's hard to get it lined up. The border seems to help a little bit, but this is supposed to be the thing I wanted to try. And this is, uh, let's see, how do you even open this up? Karen bought me this. Of course, God forbid they should tell you how to open the package. Open here. That won't work. Anyway, this is press and seal. Well, let's just see what this is. Because I don't use this. I never have used it. Let me just get a, a sheet of this out and see what the hell it is. I don't even know how you take this out of the roll. John, you got me stumped. Let's see if there's, there's got to be some kind of easy thing here. I only need a small piece of it, so why don't I just stop fooling around? Just cut a piece. This is why you always do the test before you do the motorcycle. Here we go. Who said he can't figure out how to open up a thing of wax paper? Well, let's see how this works. This is a very, not a real sticky, I'm not sure this is going to do anything at all. Nah, I don't think that's going to even do anything. It's got a little bit of glue to it, but I know there's better products than this. This, this is probably not the right product, but yeah, it's not even sticky. So I guess what we could do is eliminate this out of the picture for right now. Yeah, it does stick a little bit. Maybe it's just this end that is not good. This is why you have to do the experiment yourself. Let's let's unroll the whole roll and see what happens. Well, let's see if this does work. See, a lot of times the first thing you try doesn't work, and then you've got to you've got to basically spend some time figuring it out. Now, I don't know if this is exactly what John had in mind. But I'm going to try it anyway. And I wanted to show it in real time with all the pluses and minuses of trying to do this. Because at the end of it, we'll figure out how to do it. It's just a question of figuring out what part of this. Now this has, I think there's other product. This has some very mild stick to it. Not a whole lot. I'm not sure that does anything. I'm really not sure. Anyway, the thing is now to go over and get the piece of glass, make sure it's perfectly clean, and see if we can pop this down on the glass. All right, now this glass is perfectly clean, and of course, of course, it's just a test. This is not really going to matter. Here's what's going to matter is, and this is the whole purpose of trying to use this cling wrap or something similar to that. And I'm thinking, well, you may be able to just use some other material beside that, is that this doesn't distort when you pull it off the mat. So I don't know that this is going to come up the way I expect it to until I try it. Let's see. It's a lucky day. You know, the less distortion you can put in this, the better. Now, I remember another thing you used to do, and it was a common thing in modeling. You'd cut these letters out of ordinary office paper and use rubber cement to hold them down. Because they only have to stay down. And at that cling... That uh, cling stuff doesn't seem to do much. I'm not sure we even need it, but again, we'll find out. Now, that looks pretty stable, to be honest. That looks like it's going to be okay. So, we can get rid of this. 
And let's just see if there's a lot of stuff on it. That's an old mat. I ought to, I ought to bust, bust out and get a new mat here. Let's see if I can pick this up. There we go. Now this is the sticky part of this. Let's see if this is going to make any difference. If this comes up nicely, looks like it is. Uh, I spoke too soon. But this is why it's always good to do a little experiment yourself. Some people are comfortable even in modeling with various things that... Now I see one thing that this press and seal really would be of some value. It holds that little thing in place. Holds that in place. Now, I'm wondering if I should put these... I'm going to have to do this two separate ways to see. I think it's easier to just put the other things in place, the little middle of the yard. Now, the trick will be... i got some schmutz on this. But again, I want to show it in real time, and I want to show any mistakes I make, or any problems I have, or if it works or it doesn't work, because I'm going to get the same paycheck either way. Well, maybe the cling and seal does work good here. I don't, I don't know. You know, I won't know till I paint this. That's for sure. Now, of course, the idea is you pull up the cling and seal, and this doesn't have a, this doesn't have enough glue on it really for anything. It does have a little glue. I lied. Anyway, believe it or not, that looks like it's down pretty good. I'm totally impressed. John, maybe you're right. But you do, you always really have to do your own test. So anyway, I'm going to, I wanted to show that in real time. Here's what I want to do. I want to clean this black stuff off the glass, this paint or whatever. I didn't think that was going to be in the way. Now I have to figure out, and this is going to be maybe trickier than you think, get these little things in place. And it should not be hard, but of course we want to get them accurate. Now the thing I thought, let's see if I can do it this way. Again, because I'm trying to, trying to make this realistic. Peel this off. Now I can see if I got another one here. I know by now you're probably bored to tears, but if you see it once, we're not going to do it over and over again. Hopefully. But the thing is, this is a lot easier than this, this word Kawasaki, which is the, another decal we made years ago. Another way of putting these on, I'll just show this once, is you can get the end of it. Of course, it goes right into your finger to do this, but you can catch it on the end. And you can kind of, let's see, can we do it that way? I'm not sure how accurate that is. For this test, it's fine. And we got a, a thing here. And then we can, hopefully it warmed up enough out there, I can put some gold paint in the airbrush, throw some gold on this, and see how this masking stuff comes off. But I do remember, you know this is bringing back a lot of memories of doing this with rubber cement too. That was a decent way to do it because if I didn't do that Kawasaki decal, if I just left it silver or try to, you try to buy one off the internet or something, it's never going to be perfect. And this will be even trickier. Since we want to get it right, right there. Mm, that's a little crooked. So let's see, here would be the trick. If it's crooked, let's see how many times you can pick it up and and move it. Maybe I can do it that way. Oh, 
Okay, so you saw that in real time. I know it's boring, I know, but that is a real time, close as I can replicate how that went out. This we can throw away. And, and all the tools, and I think, and I used one number 11 blade for the whole thing. Usually by the end of this, now, I have a knife shop and a Karen uses for knives, you know, the kind of like a butcher would use, because the end of these knives doesn't really get dull. The end folds over. If you look at it under a microscope, you'll see the end is so sharp, the edge folds. So you can run this, and, and I'll, maybe I'll try to show that later. I get her to give me the knife sharpener. And because this is one thing you want a really, really sharp blade for. But I'd say that's totally successful. I'm ready to go spray paint it. Well, I thought this might be worthwhile because basically uh, it's warming up. A, it's, it's above freezing now. Some of that stuff's melting. I'm just going to try to do this. I guess I'll try to do this because I can do it with the airbrush. I can do it by the cellar door. What this will allow me to do is just see if I made, if I wanted to make positive images, what this material would work like. And again, this is the first time I've used it, and I'm trying to do it realistically, not uh, jury rig it one way or the other. Just show what's what's actually involved in this kind of stuff. And I feel like this is pretty successful so far, and I don't think doing the Kawasaki thing now. I had a little a little bit of anxiety about it, but not anymore. I just see how this again we're not looking to make this perfect in any way I just want to see more than anything I want to see how the edges come out and I wanted to show it not with all kind of camera cuts and all kind of funny stuff and oh look at me look I I never have that problem no the reality is if you really do this stuff you'll have problems and that's why conferring with somebody like John who's or anybody who's a really good modeler and you can share information. What's wonderful about that, uh, I think there's about a, a thousand or so of those model airplane videos, a lot of them show techniques just like what we're doing right now. And I know they've helped the world of modeling. And I'm not, uh, not sorry I made them at all. Yeah, doing positive lettering with this is a piece of, piece of cake. A lot, it's a lot easier to do that than to do this. But I wanted that exact color gold. That was that is a key. I did not want to have a close but no cigar thing. And basically now the only thing left is to mix up some gold paint and put it in the airbrush and spray this and see how it looks. So I wanted to show this and it works 90% of the time, not always. In other words, if you take this blade and what happens, you cut something relatively hard. You cut really hard plywood or something. You will lose the edge. The edge at a microscopic level is very fine. But when you're cutting soft stuff, usually the edge just falls over. And a lot of times you can do this. This is what butchers do. It's not a big secret how to do it. And the only reason I have this, because Karen has a lot of relatively expensive knives that uh, when my son Craig was going to culinary school, we wound up buying a lot of knives. I always was worried she'd use one of them on me. Anyway, oh yeah, that's like a razor now again. So I'm thinking maybe even a one blade cut all this. Eh, so what's the big deal? If you bought 10 blades, it wouldn't be a big deal. But anyway, it's, I think it's warmed up enough. I can shoot the gold on this and we'll, we'll get to see this in real life. So what I did, I have this big amount of gold that I've pre-tested. It seems to need about three coats. I poured off a little bit in here just because it's easier to refill the, uh, the Iwata airbrush with this. And, oh, I already filled. Genius, I filled it right up. Anyway, we're ready to... I'm going to try to stand by the door here. It's not snowing out there, but... Just to avoid getting wet, I guess. Oh, that I want an airbrush. What, what a jewel.
happens, it typically takes three coats. I purposely have this just the way it was during the test. It'll take three coats and we'll be fine. Now, of course, I'm gonna let that dry and I have some errands to do. Let that dry, come back and see how that's gonna look. I think that's gonna be fine. I know you don't see the real color of this gold until you put the clear on it. Once it's got the clear, then of course we have some right here. You can see the difference between when it's got the clear, but that's certainly, it does take three coats to cover, but I'm real happy the way that, and three airbrush coats is still a thin amount. So we'll be real happy to see once that dries up, the heating vent is on, heating vents, this heat come out of there 24-7, so this will be exciting to see that when it's, when I pull that, all that, uh, the back masking off and see if we get nice clean edges. Now just for my own information, because I have heard many people say, oh, you can pull up the paint after an hour. Well, you know what, in this case, because we have three coats of paint, the paint was still a little soft, so I just pulled one letter up to see. See, I can touch it with my hand, but it's still not really dry. So I think what I'm going to do is the, the old school thing of let it dry a lot longer. In fact, I would have let it dry overnight and be done with it. And I think what I'll do is just let this dry overnight. And let me just see if I know. I'm not sure you can see how gold that gold is until you actually put the clear on. This is one of the colors that once you put the clear on, it totally changes. So what I'll do is I'll do my own little test here. I'll come back. I thought of another thing. I'm going to wait about an hour, pull this one off, another hour, pull this one off, and just see if there's any rhyme or reason to it. The paint, see, I can touch the paint. It's still soft, though, I mean, realistically. But I heard that thing that people pull the tape off after an hour, and I've always liked to let it sit overnight, to be honest. So, uh, again, that's just being old school, just being old, I think. You can see that gold. Boy, that, that gold would when that sun hits it and it's got clear on it, it's spectacular. And when that's all put together and all, everything is got clear on it and it's buffed out, that's, that's just going to be unbelievably nice, I think. Anyway, we'll come back to that tomorrow. I hope you did enjoy the video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for coming over and shoveling that snow for me. And thanks for watching.